This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to begin to discuss tabs. If you'd like to follow along, go under the File menu to Open. And in the Sample Files folder, scroll down to 0709, Tab Tips, Part 1, and just click Open. Before we start, why don't we go to our Zoom tool. You could just hit your Z key to get there very quickly. And I'm going to click and drag with my Zoom tool across the width of my page so that it fills the window. Now, I'm going to go under my Type menu to Tabs to open the Tabs panel. That's right, it's a panel. It's not a dialog window. It's actually a huge advantage, which we're going to get to in just a couple of minutes. First, why don't we talk about the panel itself? There's a ruler going across the bottom. There are four different kinds of tab formatting buttons. There's an X field to help you position the tabs precisely. There's something called a leader field and also an align on field, which we'll talk about later. And there's also an options menu, which we will also talk about later. And then there's this interesting little magnet. If I click on that, absolutely nothing happens. And the reason is, the way my page is currently set up in the window, there's no way for it to do anything. So let me first go to my Type tool and just click on a frame. And you can see my Tabs panel ruler has actually changed. And let me click on the magnet again. And you can see now it is actually lining up with the top of the frame that I'm working with. Without an insert point, it didn't know what to do. Let me show you something else about the panel. I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit and click on my magnet again. Nothing happens. The reason is there needs to be room above the top of the page and the top of the window for the tabs panel to actually fit in there. Let me click on the magnet again and you'll see that it goes right into position. Tabs are actually paragraph formatting. So being that I have my rows in the chart that I'm setting up set up as paragraphs, I have to actually select each and every one of those paragraphs to format them together. So I'm just going to click and drag to select my four paragraphs. Let's talk about the four different kinds of tabs. The first one is a left justify tab. That means that it's going to move the text over to the tab and align the text in that column from its left out, so it's justified to the left. Let me click at an inch and see what happens. And you can see that the left side of that column aligns to the left justify tab, but it's not exactly at an inch. You can see in the X field, it's at 0.9861, almost an inch. Let me just select what is in that field and you can see how my tab is highlighted. That means that it too is selected. If I just type a one in there, because I'm working with inches, if I then hit return or enter, that tab is precisely at one inch. Let me click again. I'll go to about two and a half inches. And you can see that text is aligning beautifully with the tab. Let me click again and again. And you can see that I'm clicking in the white space above the ruler. Ah, I see a problem. And now you're about to see the big advantage of working in a panel as opposed to a dialog window. If I was in a dialog window, I wouldn't be able to make any changes to the text itself without canceling out of the dialog window and then fixing whatever it is I need to fix and then starting all over again with my tabs. Here, because I'm in a panel, watch what I can do. I can select the extra tabs that I had in that first row and just delete them. And I also have to reselect my four paragraphs or nothing is going to happen. One of the things I can do very easily is click on a tab and you can see I get an insert point. If I start dragging backwards towards the left, I'm actually moving that entire column. Let me do it again with this column and this column. And if I happen to, by mistake, go out from above the ruler, you could see 
that the tab goes away, but as long as I don't let go of my mouse button, I can go back up and let go, and there's my new formatting. Let me drag again on this tab, so I'm adjusting everything towards the left. And now that I've made room, I can click someplace else above my ruler, and you can see the text is aligning beautifully. Well, what's the next kind of tab? The next button to the right is Center Justify. That means if I apply it, the text in that column will be centered to the tab. So let me click on that second column tab and just drag it over a little bit. And now with that tab still selected, you can see it's highlighted. I'm going to click Center Justify. And you can see that the text in that column is now centered to the tab. Well, what's the next one? It's a Right Justify tab. I have to make room for this to happen because watch what happens if I just now click on Right Justify. It's kind of crowding right into the next column to the left. So let me drag it now backwards. And you can see that the column of text is aligning the right side of the text to that tab. The last kind of a tab is probably the world's longest name of any feature in InDesign. It's Align to Decimal or Other Specified Character tab. This is really an amazing tab. Not only is it a decimal tab, let me show you what happens when I click with that second tab selected on the decimal tab. And you can see that all of the decimals are now aligned. But what is this other specified character? Well, let me move this over a little bit. And you can see that it is aligning to the decimals perfectly in that insert line going down the entire page. Right now, it's aligning on a decimal or a period. What would happen if I type some other character in there with this tab selected? I'm going to type a zero, and let's just see what happens when I hit return or enter. All of the first zeros from the left in each one of those rows is now aligned perfectly going down my page. So you can literally align on any character, a very powerful feature. Let's talk for just a second about the Options menu. There is an Options menu. After all, it is a panel. I'm going to click on that downturned arrow, and you can see it says Clear All. Well, that could be rather useful if I decide I want to start all over again. It's going to clear out all of those tabs. Now, this next one, Delete Tab, is only going to delete the selected tab. Well, I don't really ever have to go under the Options menu to do that because all I have to do is click on a tab and drag it out from above the ruler in either direction and it's going to go away. I'm going to put that back in. I didn't let go of my mouse and there we go. So it's still aligning all of the zeros perfectly. But what else is there? There's something called Repeat Tab, which we're going to talk about in detail in the next lesson. Basically, it allows you to set up one tab and then repeat it over and over again. Then there's something called Reset Indents. Your paragraph indents are actually right here along the left side of the Tabs panel. The bottom one, if I click on it, you can see it's moving also the top indent, which is the first line indent. I could actually click on that and drag it backwards. So now this is a way that you could set up a bullet style if you want it, but it's easier to do it in the paragraph panel. But watch what happens with these offsets if I go under my options menu to reset indents. And they go right back to where they started. Now, of course, the first thing that you would do after setting up complex tabs formatting is save a paragraph style. So you can use that formatting again and again. If I had all of my rows in one paragraph by using a forced line break between each one of these rows, I would only have to click in any one of the rows and it would apply the tab formatting to all of them. We're going to continue to discuss tabs in the next lesson.